Hi, I'm uh, Jun Nakajima from uh, Intel. Today, I'm going to talk about implementation options of KBM-based Type 1 or 1.5 hypervisor. Before that, I'd like to appreciate Chan Shao and Anthony for their effort and contribution to this project. They implemented POCs and also measured, measured a lot of data for this project. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Cham Seon and Anthony. So as usual, now that's the angel, I'm, start, I'm starting from the motivation and show some uh, implementation options and then POC performance data and followed by the, our conclusion next step. Okay. I presented this at the last KVM forum, but at that time I pointed out the security risk of a, a guest on Linux KVM. Basically, KVM piggybacks or depend on the Linux, uh, the host, and uh, Linux is, as you know, needs to run various operating system workloads, and it's much larger than KVM itself for a hypervisor. So it has more attack surfaces and making the guest more exposed. Also, user space BMM like a QMU has full access to the uh, guest memory. Also, uh, guest CP state. And then uh, the kernel has a full access to any guest memory or CPU state. So that's a kind of security risk of existing uh, Linux KVM implementation. Okay. So the motivation of a type one hypervisor uh, it, this is not the new, for example, if you look at Zen, it's kind of a 1.5. And then also Hyper-V and another hypervisor has a similar uh, architecture. The benefits of uh, the type 1 or type 1 point uh, hypervisor is it separates the hypervisor from uh, Linux which uh, handles more complex operations and uh, for example IO with uh, using uh, various uh, device drivers from various uh, parties and process management you know user process handling whereas the hypervisor will be responsible for isolation and then also, if trusted, hypervisor can create secure environment like trusted execution environment or trusted VMM on top of a hypervisor. Now take a look at how we can uh, how we can convert KVM to type 1.5. Okay, so we take a standard Linux plus KVM system and then. Insert hypervisor as L0. Now the KVM becomes L1, and then the existing VMs become like a nested, so L2. Okay. But we still want to keep IO path through. Um, so the hypervisor itself uh, basically doesn't have any device driver, IO device driver. And then we call DOM0 like Zen guys did. Essentially, this is very similar to the Zen architecture. The difference would be the as a DOM0, it, it uses uh, basically unmodified Linux. Okay. But there are more, uh, more uh, differences uh, I'll talk about. And in terms of implementation, we have uh, two extremes. 
one extreme is as hyper, you know, I've been talking about the hypervised implementation. One extreme is to use a uh, minimally configured Linux, okay, plus KVM. And since it's a Linux, although it doesn't have an IO device driver, it's uh, basically an operating system. It has a scheduler, memory management, so forth. Okay, and then it boots first and separately from the DOM0. Okay. As a Linux, it can run user processes and it can run user level VMMs uh, for DOM0. We cannot use a QMU per se, uh, mainly because what well, doesn't need to. It doesn't need to, you know, not use a QMU because uh, IO virtualization is not really required there. Okay. For other VMs, uh, we we probably need to use QMU. This is one implementation, and the other side is they say the lightweight hypervisor. Uh, it's simply just a deprivileged uh, Linux for isolation and it's just uh, reactive so as long as the host Linux behaves uh, the sorry, guest Linux behaves well it doesn't generate uh, the VM exit okay and this can be loaded by Linux at the early boot time as long as the Linux was the healthy at that time, okay. And then common thing is again IO path through. So let's talk about pros and cons for each implementation option, okay. One is uh, Linux KVM hypervisor. So again, the hypervisor is minimally configure Linux plus KVM okay so it has a user level as well it's user support like the DOM the user level BMM and then the QMU the benefits as a hypervisor uh, you can run unmodified guest on L1 here and since the hypervisor is a Linux uh, KVM, you can benefit from a Linux KVM also, continue to benefit. Right? But there are some uh, uh, disadvantages of this uh, approach. First of all, I'll talk about it later, but the higher latency to DOM0 uh, because of a scheduling, double scheduling and then VM exit. And it's still big, so it may have issue as a TCB. Oh, we, we may be able to handle that. Okay. And then, BART IO for the guest. As long as you run the guest within a DOM0, which is just a Linux, a typical Linux system, but this guy, this, this uh, it one is outside DOM0 and there are some issue with uh, handling vertio for this uh, for you know these uh, VMs. Also, power management is es es essentially who should manage the power for the CPUs and then the platform. Okay. So I'll talk about some scheduling and uh, power management issues here. As hypervisor or well, Linux. Uh, it needs to own the VM scheduling, VM scheduling, okay. To that end, we need to intercept halt emulate in DOM0. But this causes uh, inefficiency for, especially for the client, because of a uh, two-level scheduling. So now we have a uh, scheduling at the two levels in the hypervisor Linux and also within the the DOMS Linux kernel. And because of those uh, we see unexpected latency in VMs, especially in the DOM zero. 
Now, other th issue is how we're going to create the VMs. Um, we need to invoke the QMU process here to create the L1 VMM. I'm sorry, L1 VM. But from a user point of view, this user process is available. You cannot really access to hypervisor level uh, of a user space. Okay, so we need have some uh, uh, communication, safe communication, safe, secure communication to from a uh, user level in DOM0 to hypervisor or the QMU or some process on the hypervisor side. Bertio is also a problem um, because from the QMU process point of view, he doesn't have a device driver available in the hypervisor. Only a memory file system be available. So QMU can uh, in the hypervisor, uh, run VM without Bertio. So it's again it's limited. There are probably ways to allow that uh, QMU to access the the real I/O devices, but uh, we don't know how at this point. Okay. Probably we need something like a Zen or a Hyper-V kind of a solution here. So switch to the lightweight hypervisor. Pros is, like I said, a uh, code pass. If you look at the code pass of uh, this uh, DOM, the code pass is basically Id almost uh, probably identical to the bare metal, same code to the, the bare metal Linux KVM. And that's a uh, low overhead and then the low latency and then the small TCB okay the disadvantage is if you want to run the L1 VM for example in Uncrave a secure environment for purpose then we have kind of similar problem basically the this uh, lightweight hypervisor doesn't have any device drivers so and then also no user process available. So it's not really, not so easy to support virtual devices in the L1 VMs. You can run the unmodified guest, but that's the case, in that case, the VMs uh, will be run as L2, as a KVM guest which is L1 nested, okay? So there may be some uh, performance concern with that. There are some uh, optimization uh, when run, uh, when uh, running a KVM gas on top of lightweight hypervisor. Okay. So one is uh, op so-called optimized nesting. I'll talk about more uh, details on the next uh, page. But uh, we can pass through most of the uh, shadow, uh, the fees of the uh, shadow BMCS. And also we can convert the shadow BMCS to real BMCS very quickly, just flipping one bit. Anyway, I'll talk about more detail on the uh, next page. The other technique we have is um, we, we can have the KVM the first uh, level entry point inside the lightweight hypervisor then handle the VM axis immediately inside L0 hypervisor and quickly go back for the uh, for a more complex uh, handling uh, we need to go back to KBM so in that case uh, we need to enter the KBM or the DOM0 for that part. But still, it's uh, faster as long as uh, we can handle within the L0 hypervisor. In that case, 
the L2 VM looks like kind of a L1 VM. Okay. So now I'll talk about more details on nested virtualization. For nested virtualization in a KVM, um, we use the so-called VMC as shadowing. And the benefits of VM sh shadowing is uh, it doesn't need to cause the, the VM exit upon a VM read or VM write in a L1 VMM. So if the hypervisor allow the VM, uh, the guest VMM to directly access the VMCS, then it doesn't need to generate the VM exit. It just uh, access the VMCS. The hypervisor can set the bitmap uh, for the VMCS fields, uh, read and write, the separate the bitmaps for read and the write operation. So as long as they are not in the bitmap, then uh, the L1 VMM can just simply do the operation, VM read, the VM write operation without causing VM exit to the L0 VMM. But sometimes uh, it needs to generate the B, uh, the B L0 VMM needs to intercept. And even still, the v, uh, we use the VMCS shadowing. Um, certain writes or read to the BMCS field causes a VM exit. Also, the biggest problem with the BMCS uh, shadowing is this shadow BMCS itself cannot be used for VM entry. So when we go back to the L2 VM, we need to copy or sync some of uh, the VMCS field so that we can make a real VMCS for the VM entry back to the L2 VM. Now, the optimization we have, we have doesn't require copy or sync because the VMCS uh, shadow or shadow VMCS is identical to the real VMCS. We still need to intercept the some uh, limited the VMCS field uh, by the L1 VMM for security purposes, but the contents are basically the same, so we can just uh, flip the bit. Now we talk now let's talk about the uh, POC. So we extended uh, VBH uh, to create the lightweight hypervisor POC. The original VBH, VBH is a virtualization-based hardening. It simply deprivileged the Linux kernel to harden the kernel using hardware-based virtualization features. We pass through all I.O. and also APIC. And in the POC, from the VBH, uh, you know, beyond the VBH, we added uh, simple nesting support. This only works for the L1 VM, VMM, like a bare metal uh, VM, where the GPA is uh, identical to HPA. Like I showed, uh, we implemented the optimized uh, BMCS shadowing and also virtual EPT to make sure I, to isolation. Also added uh, uh, a feature to run a simple L1 VM in a trusted uh, environment. We can run Opti OS. Uh, please look at uh, the pointer below. And we are working on uh, virtual MMU, IO MMU support. Okay, now let's take a look at the performance data. What kind of performance data we have by comparing the the VM L1 or L2 VM performance uh, on uh, 
KVM based hypervisor versus the lightweight hypervisor. So we are comparing the VM, L2 VMs on top of a Linux KVM hypervisor versus lightweight hypervisor. So the first uh, uh, performance measurement is the comparison of uh, L2 VMs. Okay. So this is kind of result, and this one shows the uh, improvements from flipping, uh, you know, the shadow VMCS indicator, that the one bit. Okay. So if you look at the VM exit uh, cost, initially uh, v uh, KVM had this much, but now it's uh, more than like a one tenth. Okay, less than one tenth. So you see. A uh, consistent, uh, you know, result in terms of uh, the VM exit uh, latency reduction, like about 10x or more. Okay. Also, at at the time of a VM entry, uh, because of a fast uh, switching, uh, you also see like uh, almost a 10x uh, improvement or more than 10x improvement. So we have a very good uh, L2 uh, performance, okay, compared with the KVM L2. If we compare KVM L1, okay, versus that L2 on the lightweight hypervisor, okay. So this is a result, okay. Result is it's almost same. We have some. Uh, uh, regression in um, I.O. area at this point, but this is kind of uh, first implementation, so we don't have any optimization for I.O. at this point. But so the performance looks good, and then we don't have uh, the another optimization like a KVM fast entry point handling. Okay, so today the L2 VMs on lightweight hypervisor runs purely in a uh, nested way. So from uh, POCs, we found a couple of things. So we also uh, have a POC for the Linux KVM hypervisor. It actually has structural impact, okay? The structural impact in the sense of a resource management. Okay, scheduling, like I said, uh, the double scheduling, and then also power management. The Linux as a hypervisor needs to have the power management. Although hypervisor doesn't have a, 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 any I.O. devices, it needs to handle, it still needs to handle the uh, VM management. But from a user point of view, I mean, the user of L0, DOM0 uh, user level, it doesn't allow to manage the VM directly because the QMU on the DOM0 just handles the VMs on the DOM0. Okay. Virtual implementation will be a bit tricky. We need a similar solution like Zen or Hyper-V provides, like uh, you know Zen bus and the back end and the front end uh, so, you know solution. Like the bigger challenge is to kind of uh, redo all the performance or validation work if we switch to this one because you you have a different uh, resource management structure. Right, large difference here in terms of performance or tuning. Um, you cannot really get same results as a bare metal. Once you have this hypervisor, this architecture, you need to redo the optimization and tuning. On the light hand, lightweight hypervisor side, we had uh, some concern with uh, nesting, and at this point, the performance of uh, L2 on the uh, lightweight hypervisor and then the KBM L1 is almost the same, except uh, uh, 
IO. IO is about 90% of L1 KBM at this point. So we still need more optimization for IO. Here's our conclusion. The lightweight or reactive hypervisor approach is more suitable for the existing Linux KBM. When making it more secure, i.e. type 1 or 1.5 BMM, because we can maintain the same code path as the bare metal Linux KBM, including uh, scheduling and power management and so forth. It also provides low latency and overhead. In addition, the VBH-based hypervisor can harden the DOM zero kernel and the guest kernel as well. KBM guests also run with minimal overhead, even though they, they run in the L2 environment. We also found advantage when implementing trusted execution environment because of a small TCB. So this is the uh, next step. So we want to finish the VBH-based uh, POC, uh, especially complete IOMMU virtualization and optimize uh, KVM guest more, especially in uh, buffer IO areas, especially IO uh, write operations. We also add, uh, we also add uh, uh, first level KBM entry point in VBH. And then after that, we share the source code. With that, uh, this is the uh, end of my presentation. Thank you.